Today, the United States, together with our allies and partners, has reached a historic understanding with Iran, which, if fully implemented, will prevent it from obtaining a nuclear weapon. As President and Commander-in-Chief, I have no greater responsibility than the security of the American people. And I am convinced that if this framework leads to a final comprehensive deal, it will make our country, our allies, and our world safer. Today, we have taken a decisive step. We have reached solutions on key parameters of a joint comprehensive plan of action. The political determination, the goodwill, and the hard work of all parties made it possible. And let us thank all delegations for their tireless dedication. Today we have reached a critical milestone in that quest. We, our P5 plus one EU partners and Iran, have arrived at a consensus on the key parameters of an arrangement that once implemented will give the international community confidence that Iran's nuclear program is and will remain exclusively peaceful. And over the coming weeks, with all of the conditions of the 2013 Joint Plan of Action still in effect, from this moment forward, our experts will continue to work hard to build on the parameters that we have arrived at today and finalize a comprehensive deal by the end of June. None of those measures include closing any of our facilities. The proud people of Iran would never accept that. Our facilities will continue. This framework is a step in a very, very dangerous direction. It leaves Iran with an expansive nuclear infrastructure, not closing down a single Iranian nuclear installation. At the same time, it allows Iran to have thousands of centrifuges to enrich uranium and to continue research and development on better and more efficient centrifuges. The sole purpose of Iran's nuclear program is to build atomic bombs. And this framework lends legitimacy, international legitimacy, to that effort. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu insisting that this deal will threaten the very survival of Israel. The cabinet is united in strongly opposing the proposed deal. This deal would pose a grave danger to the region and to the world and would threaten the very survival of the state of Israel. Such a deal does not block Iran's path to the bomb. Such a deal paves Iran's path to the bomb and it might very well spark a nuclear arms race throughout the Middle East, and it would greatly increase the risks of terrible war. Now, some say that the only alternative to this bad deal is war. That's not true. There's a third alternative, standing firm, increasing the pressure on Iran until a good deal is achieved. And finally, let me say one more thing. Iran is a regime that openly calls for Israel's destruction and openly and actively works towards that end. Just two days ago, in the midst of the negotiations in Lausanne, the commander of the besieged security forces in Iran said this, the destruction of Israel is non-negotiable. Well, I want to make clear to all the survival of Israel is non-negotiable. Saudi Arabia is apparently prepared to allow Israeli jets into its airspace to conduct attacks on Iran. That's according to a report by the Israeli Channel 2 TV station, citing an unnamed senior European source. The move will allow Israel to bomb targets in Iran and avoid a lengthy detour around the Persian Gulf, 
The report highlighted the close collaboration and shared intelligence between Israel and Saudi Arabia over Iran's controversial nuclear program. Both countries are worried Tehran is close to developing an atomic bomb. Israel will not accept an agreement which allows a country that vows to annihilate us to develop nuclear weapons, period. It's no secret that the Israeli Prime Minister and I don't agree about whether the United States should move forward with a peaceful resolution to the Iranian issue. More importantly, I will be speaking with the Prime Minister today to make clear that there will be no daylight, there is no daylight, when it comes to our support for Israel's security and our concerns about Iran's destabilizing policies and threats towards Israel. And that's why I've directed my national security team to consult closely with the new Israeli government in the coming weeks and months about how we can further strengthen our long-term security cooperation with Israel and make clear our unshakable commitment to Israel's defense. Today I also spoke with the King of Saudi Arabia to reaffirm our commitment to the security of our partners in the Gulf. And I'm inviting the leaders of the six countries who make up the Gulf Cooperation Council, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, and Bahrain, to meet me at Camp David this spring to discuss how we can further strengthen our security cooperation while resolving the multiple conflicts that have caused so much hardship and instability throughout the Middle East. The past two years of negotiations have convinced uh, governments like Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Turkey, and perhaps others that the United States is not going to do what's necessary to prevent Iran from getting nuclear weapons. Uh, and so the nuclear arms race isn't going to wait until Iran detonates its first nuclear test device. The nuclear arms race has already begun. But what about all of this talk out of the administration saying, oh, we have. Uh, really uh, dismantled or, or prevented the Iranians from, from getting a bomb here? Well, it's, it's wrong in almost every particular, but let's start with the even more fundamental point. What deal do they have? If you look at all the statements that were issued yesterday, precisely one of them uh, was a joint statement between the European Union and Iran. Everything else was unilateral. The administration issued a fact sheet with a lot of specifics on it. Where was Iran's signature on that fact sheet? That's the administration's characterization of what they think was agreed. And I'll tell you something, in an international negotiation, if you can't reach an agreement in principle sufficiently clear that the parties can sign their names to it, you don't have an agreement in principle. I think this is all still up in the air, and I think the Iranians have a sense that they're going to get even more concessions from the administration. You know, by the administration's own metrics, by the statements the president and others have made over the past several years, this is well below what they themselves said was the minimal acceptable. The president even said yesterday the Iranians will be allowed to continue their heavy water reactor. What do you need a heavy water reactor for if you're not running a nuclear weapons program? Yeah, and, and on that point, the uh, fact sheet from the White House says that the redesigned Iraq heavy water reactor will not produce weapons-grade plutonium. Now, I'm not a nuclear physicist, but it's my understanding that any fissile reaction of uranium in a controlled environment like a reactor produces plutonium that's weapons-grade, plutonium-239. Uh, you can have more or less of it. You can have heavy versus light water reactors but it produces weapons-type plutonium. So I'd like an explanation from the State Department. How exactly are they going to avoid that? And by the way, is there any other reactor like that in operation in the world today? Good question. A quick uh, couple of tweets from the Ayatollah Khamenei. He said, U.S. sanctions are ineffective. Threatening to sanction or military action won't scare Iranians. God backs Iranian nation's resistance. And then he also tweeted this out. Uh, after saying that sanctions are ineffective, he says, we reject U.S. fraudulent offer of reaching a deal with Iran first, then lifting sanctions. Lifting sanctions is part of a deal, not its outcome. He sounds like a guy who really wants the sanctions lifted. So which is it there? 
Well, I think there's still fundamental division between Iran and the others over when and under what circumstances the sanctions get lifted. And let's be clear, the administration itself has said repeatedly that the negotiations are taking place under the general rubric, nothing is agreed to until everything is agreed to. So again, all of these specifics that the White House has put out uh, get swept away if Iran isn't satisfied on lifting the sanctions, which, by the way, are shot through with holes. They've been evaded very successfully. And the regime itself, the sanctions regime, is crumbling in front of us as businesses around the world say it will end formally. We're going to get into the Iranian market first. Last question, or it's really a, a request for a prediction. What happens June 30th when this deal is supposed to be finalized? I think there will be a deal signed. I think the, the Iranians have one very clear objective. Sign this deal during the Obama administration. God knows who will be elected to succeed him, but it's hard to imagine anybody who's a weaker, worse negotiator than this president. Ambassador John Bolton, a Fox News contributor. Thank you. Thank you, John.